Good morning. I just woke up and I have something on my mind. I want to tell you a story. I'm not going to mention names. If you know this story, please do not mention names. But I have to tell it because last night I ran across a story that I was listening to that reminded me of this. And then my friend called me last night and she just briefly was talking and then threw this in. And I was like, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. That is not right. And so I feel like I need to talk about it because not only do I want you to win, but I want you to show up and make sure everybody in that not office, everybody in that room, everybody knows who you are. No more sitting in the back. You want to be great, but you don't really want everybody to know your name. You want to be powerful. You want to be seen as a, a, a respectful person, but you don't, you don't really want to step on no toes. Enough of that. Enough, 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 enough. Because if we're trying to be hope dealers, as we call it, we got to, first of all, have hope in ourselves and know who we are. And when she told me she was still waiting on something that she wasn't going to get, I already knew what was up. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how sweet you are. When you come across somebody with a bigger name than you, they're going to treat you like a small name. They're going to treat you like you're nobody. They're going to treat you like you don't matter. They're going to treat you like you, you're nice, you're sweet, you're kind, but I really ain't got to pay you like that because you ain't nobody yet. You ain't got a big name, so I really ain't got to respect you. You ain't really, you know, in my camp like that. You just some extra, so I really ain't got to pay you. I really ain't got to respect you. I really ain't got to treat you with any type of respect. You really ain't nobody of authority. You really ain't got a name like that. So take what you get because you're in my presence. You need to be happy that you're even in my presence. You need to be grateful that you've been on the team, but you really ain't a part of the team. You just need it in case we need you. Like, mm-mm. That's why I'm telling y'all, start your YouTube. Put your name out there. Stop being in the background thinking they're going to see you because they're never going to see you if you want to stay in the background. Some people want to be picked, but you don't get picked if you ain't up in the front letting them know what's up. So, let me tell you this story, right? A while back, I had lost a lot of weight, right? And when I lost this weight, I caught the attention of someone who is an amazing, amazing business person. And I always wanted to, why? I always wanted to sit at this person's feet. Always, always. And I finally got their eye, I got their attention. They started following me on social media. And I was like, oh wow. Like, really? Because I really admired this person and I was losing so much weight that I caught their attention. And this is, a, of course, still using Panoxyl because I need, I need my face to do some things. I need my face to do some things. Panoxyl face cream is amazing. It was the last one at Target, too. So I caught her attention and I was just like, oh, my God, I've always wanted to sit at your feet. Like, you are so amazing. And. I was one of those people where I just was like big up in people because I just was like, oh my God. And I learned a long time ago, that's good to do, but it's also not, okay? So, you know, following me, I'm already following this person, commenting on their pictures, cause I'm just like, I love everything they do. I'm like, I look up to them, I, I admire them. And I just was like, oh my God, this person's amazing. And so I'm losing weight. And then I, I start posting videos on my Instagram, pretty much just like encouragement videos. Kind of like the video you saw in my weight loss, uh, I lost 100 pounds video. Kind of like that one where I was just like, let's go, let's go. You know, I noticed that they really liked that about me, that I had that type of personality, you know. And so they started watching me and liking my stuff. And, and then they found out I was raising money for 
my loose skin removal surgery. And so they sent me some money. They sent me over a thousand dollars, you know, because I had mentioned that I was still doing DoorDash to raise money. And I had mentioned that I make about fourteen hundred dollars a week. And so they pretty much sent me what I was worth. They sent me what I was capable of. You know, they didn't send me any more or any less. They sent me what it what I was worth. And and uh I was like, man, wow. And after they sent me that, you know, towards my loose skin removal surgery, which I did spend on it, uh, I would say some time later, not even a few days later, I, they invited me to a celebrity getaway type thing. And I was just like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, I didn't work. So when they asked me, you know what, do you want to, do you want to come? Like, it's like a challenge. Whoever wins gets to come, but you're you pretty much already won. Just send in your inquiry, uh, your entry, and boom, you won. So I did that, and then literally the next day I was on a plane. Like that's how much I admired this person, and I was just like, oh my god! Like this house was a three thousand a night mansion, you know. And I looked it up, and they had a private chef. Oh my god, the food. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but ended up you know, going the, literally the next day, I dropped everything and got on a plane to go to this amazing mansion. Didn't know who was going to be there. It was just uh, one of those. She, she liked me so much that she invited me. Now, she did not take this up with anyone else. Okay. That's where the problem was. Like, she liked me. She admired me so much. And she was just like, this is my house. I'm paying for this. I got the chef. You know, I invited y'all, so it should be okay with who I invite. Like, I shouldn't have to check with nobody. You know, I like this person. I admire this person. I want this person there talking about me. So she didn't really take this up with anybody else, right? And I didn't know who was going to be there. You know, I, would, I just was excited to be there. So I get there. I got a... a, a, a um, a private driver picking me up in a black car, baby. I'm feeling like, what? I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, who am I? Like, really? My name and everything. They got my name. But at first they couldn't find me, but finally found me. He had my name and everything. Like, got in the black car. And I mean, I'm like, what? Like, this is crazy. Find out I'm going to um, a city I've never been. Okay, I probably, I don't want to really name too much, but I've never been there. Beautiful, like, oh my God, like nature, mountains, red hills. Yes, it was beautiful. And it was at night, so I couldn't really see nothing. But when I got to the house, are you kidding me? The house, like... Let's just say on the inside was red rocks. Inside the room, the stairs were rock, were, were rocks, red rocks. What do you call the red? <sighs> like it was absolutely phenomenal. Every detail of this house was phenomenal. And so I get there, it's nighttime. And then I, I you know, I know it was, to me it wasn't strangers. Um, cause I, I've been following this person for years, admired this person for years, and I was just happy to be at this person's feet. Okay. Like, really? This is like Oprah inviting you to her house. Okay. Everybody knows Oprah. What I got to be scared for. Okay. <laughs> so, um, got to the house. It was late at night and there was already somebody there. They took me to my room. Um, got to my room and I it was a bed but then there was also like a small little cot it was like one of those concentration cots where you like um, it's kind of like where if you're in the army and y'all are like you know you're in the army but you're in the in the base you know and you're ready for war and you got those little thin beds that are like just pretty much a thin, thick cloth material with a sheet. You know, that's what I had. I didn't have a bed. I didn't have a room. I had a little cot. Um, 
you, I mean, I, yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, just bringing back memories of like, wow, I don't have a bed. I don't have a room. You know, I just got this thick cloth cot. Okay. But ended up going, um, slept there, woke up, and then went to the the kitchen, the main house. <gasps> when I got to the main house, oh my God. Like the living room, the ba the bathroom, the master bathroom that that the person was staying in that invited me was the size of a bedroom, like a master bedroom. And I was just like, are you serious? And then it's like, it was a lot of rooms in this house. It was a lot. And then I come to find out when I get to the kitchen, oh, oh actually that night I met everybody. So that night I met everybody real quick and we sat at the table, everybody talked. I'm not mentioning any names, but let's just say these are people that I was like, are you kidding me? I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And there was one person there I did not know. And maybe I, I just, I was just like, okay, who are you? What's your name? And I wasn't saying it mean. I was just like, I really didn't know who that person was. And I could tell they kind of like, well, if you don't know me, you don't need to know me. Like, who are, like, who are you? What's your name? I don't know you like that, but I know I know everybody else. So that just that started being real awkward. And that whole night just saying little stuff like you don't know this person, you know, why is this person here? Like, oh see, I gotta I gotta be careful because I don't know what she can do. I don't know her. I don't and I'm just like, I don't know. I was just it was just awkward that whole night. You know? And um and we just started talking and I'm like, you know what? I should have just stayed quiet. I should have just stayed quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't show my personality because it, it went left and it was just crazy. This person, you know, was really just saying all kinds of stuff, making little remor remarks. And then I said something that threw everybody off because I was just like, yeah, prayer is good. But we also have to realize that we have to do the work. Like I, I was talking about how much weight I lost and I was just like, I prayed, but then I did the work like and then, and then I started talking about how I was fasting and it turned into that sounding weird about Cole Robinson. And then this same person just, oh my God, see, she was just like, oh my God, see you inviting people that we don't know. And, 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 and now I'm, I'm, I'm scared to sleep. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to, um, I don't know what this person going to do to me in my sleep and See, uh-uh, see, I like, see, now I really don't like you. Now, you know, now I really, you know, don't trust you. Like, who is this person you invited? We don't know who this person is. And and I was just like, wow. I never thought I'd be looked at as somebody scared to sleep around. And she was like, uh-uh, see, I can't, I can't do this. Uh-uh, you gonna have to, uh, I can't be around her. Like, I'm like, What? And so <sighs> that was weird. And um, I kind of just felt uncomfortable that night. Yeah, it was that night. It hadn't even went to the morning yet. And just thinking about it, I feel like crying because I'm just like, I didn't expect it to go this way. Like, I'm just here to have a good time. I'm not evil. I'm not, I'm just talking about Cole Robinson and his fasting techniques. I mean, the name is weird, but, you know, if you think about it, uh, it makes sense. Like, but anyway, so that night was just awkward. And then um, I just, I, I went to the room that night when I got there that night. Yeah. And went to the room and I was just, it was like four o'clock in the morning and I woke up and I just got this overwhelming feeling to leave. And I was like, I should probably leave. And I just was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get an Uber and I'm going to leave. And the girl who was sleeping in the room with me, she was up. She had woke up and she must've heard me moving around and packing my stuff. And she was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, I'm going to leave. And she said, why? I said, because something is off. And I just started crying. Because I just felt like something was off. And she said, 
why are you leaving? You know, she said, you just got here. I said, yeah, but something's off and I'm crying and I'm just overwhelmed with emotion. And so she was like, no, just wait, you know, don't leave now. If you're going to leave, just wait until the sun comes up, wait until tomorrow. So I'm like, okay, I will wait. So I laid there, but I still was just uncomfortable. I was just ready to go. I was ready to go. And now when I think about it, I'm like, it's a good thing I didn't leave because she could have canceled the flight. You know, she could have canceled the flight and I would have just been butt out because I came down there with like less than $200. So, you know, I feel like I did the right thing by staying. That way my flight wouldn't be canceled and I'd just be at the airport. I'm using the Biore Witch Hazel. Started back using this poor clarifying toner by Biore. It's really good. It's Witch Hazel. So woke up that next day and it was crazy. So it was like seven in the morning and her assistant came in the room and she was like, okay, something's wrong. She was like, um, we got to put you back on the flight because such and such has to run home and sign contracts. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cause I already was like, had a bad feeling. And I was already like, okay, I need to go home. But then she's like, we got to put you back on a flight. Um, she has to rush back too on a flight. So um, I hate that we got to send you back home. But um, thank you for coming. And I was like, okay. She was like, but we're having breakfast. So come down for breakfast. Your flight leaves today at around, I don't know, was it 3 o'clock or something like that? The The... The, the black truck was going to come pick me up, but she was like, come down and have breakfast with us first. You know, let's all have breakfast. And I, when I tell y'all that chef, woo, that food, and we also had food that night. It was like lobster, mac and cheese. It was, I mean, it was amazing. It was, woo, just thinking about it. It was so good. It was so perfect. I mean, this chef was amazing. And that morning, the breakfast, like, Oh my God, the breakfast, <gasps> French toast, fruit. Um, I mean, just everything you can think of. It was incredible. So we went to breakfast and it was just so weird. Like um, the girl who kind of was giving me a hard time, she kind of started kind of being a little nice to me and she was saying, congratulations on your weight loss. That's not easy to do. She was being really nice. Not nice, but not nasty, but not nasty, but not nice. But she was just like, congratulations on your weight loss. That's a really good job that you did. You know, you did good. And I was like, thank you. And and I was, you know, I was just like, I was hurt inside. I was, I was, I was hurt. I felt pain, emotional pain, because I just came there to have a good time. Not thinking that I was going to be kind of treated like the outcast, which I was. And then they went on to talk about, oh, this was that night. This was that night where they said, um, you invited these people and we don't know these people. Because she invited me and um, another person and another person. But she already knew those two. They didn't really know me. Like one of them, they kind of knew, but they didn't really know me. So they were kind of like, you know, we are people in the industry. We don't really like people around us that we don't know. And I understand that. I wasn't even tripping about that. I, I had no problem with that. But see, I didn't really understand that, that she didn't tell them that I was coming. So they were just like, you invite these people. And then they said something to the person who invited me. And, and they were like, yeah, you're right. I should have told y'all that I was inviting people you didn't know. And they were like, yeah, because you didn't let us know. You didn't let us know nothing. And another person was coming who was a big name that you all know. Um, but she, she declined. She didn't, she didn't end up coming. I don't know if it was because it was people there that they didn't know. And then one person came, she came in, um, a couple hours after I got there, or maybe an hour. And she's a big name too. Everybody knows who this person is. And she was cool. She was cool. Like, oh my God, I loved meeting her. Absolutely beautiful in person as she is, you know, <sighs> and, um, Everybody was cool, but they I could tell she was just when it got to that part about you invited her and we don't even know who this person is. 
And it was just like, after that, they were like, yeah, you need to let us know next time you invite somebody that we don't know. And I'm just like, okay, they're right. I mean, this is her money. This is her house. You know, she can invite who she wants, but I understand, you know, you, you don't want people around you that you don't know. You, you know, you're protective of the person who was there that she was there with, you, you know, it, it just, and so that next morning we have breakfast and she comes to me because I'm like, why am I like, why am I going home? Like, and, but I felt something was off. Something was weird because it took a, it was just this back and forth. It was almost like there was a fire and the assistant kept going back and forth to the room. I don't know what was going on. I just felt something in my spirit wasn't right. And she was just like, well, we, we, first of all, they weren't sure about if I was going home or not, I think. But then she came back and she was like, well, oh no, this is what happened. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so at like seven o'clock in the morning, I got an email. That's what it was that said my flight changed to leave that day. And I'm thinking to myself, how do they know I wanted to leave? I didn't tell nobody I wanted to leave. How did they know I wanted to leave? And the girl had been asleep. I don't feel like she said anything either because she had been asleep and I had been up. I hadn't gotten any sleep to be honest. I was just there and she was asleep. And I got a, a message that said my flight changed. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm leaving today, which is something I was desiring because I didn't feel right. So she comes in and she's like, well, such and such has to go back home and sign contracts. So you're going to leave when she leaves. And the person who invited me, they were saying she's going to leave when you leave. And um, I'm like, okay. And uh, deep down, it's like, man, I, I hate that it had to be like this. Then after so much commotion and back and forth to the rooms and I'm just like, why am I leaving? Kind of feeling like it's not about that. Because at first... There was no reason and then later it was a reason and I was just like okay talk to the person who invited me she was so sweet she gave me a hug she was like yeah I gotta go home and take care of some stuff I didn't know I was gonna have to leave but I don't want you here you know without me here um, so I'm gonna so so we're gonna put you on a plane so you can go and then I'm gonna leave and she hugged me and we talked and she was so nice then I left with, a, with the other girl. She sent the, another girl home. She didn't send a third girl home, but she sent another woman home and she was not talking to me. We got in the same car together. We rode to the airport together and she was not talking to me. I can tell she was sad about having to leave. Like we had just got there in this big, beautiful house, in this big, beautiful area, million dollar home. Um, and we had to leave literally the next night. And I could tell she was kind of sad. But I didn't, like, I didn't really know why we were, like, they said why we were leaving, but I kind of just didn't feel like that was the truth. So we got to the airport, and I could tell she was, she really didn't want to talk to me. She was real sad. And I said, okay, bye. And I didn't realize why she was sad until after. And I said, okay, bye. She was like, okay, bye, safe flight. And, um... I don't want, you know, I'm not going to give too much detail, because this is, I don't, yeah... But um, went home and then I was sad because I just knew in my spirit something wasn't right. Went home and then I look on Instagram at their pages and I noticed they never did go home. <laughs> Nobody ever went home except for me and that other girl. They were having living their best life, having a good time pictures, posting pictures, is still in the same area. They're out about the town. They went to dinner that night, dressed up, and they had a good time. And I was like, okay, I knew it. I knew it. So this is my theory. When I was invited, the person who invited me, who took care of all the finances and paid for the house and everything, and the chef invited me because she liked me but when I got there people didn't know me and they weren't and that makes sense when you're in the industry you really don't want nobody around you that you don't know and so it was just a little awkward and maybe I threw it off by not knowing who that person was and made them feel some type of way because after that is when I noticed you know 
just that person was kind of acting funny towards me. And when they talked about it, and when one of the girls didn't show up, who uh, they she'd invited, who's really, everybody knows this person, loves this person. When they didn't show up, maybe it, it was like, okay, wow, I should have maybe told them about strangers coming before I just invited them. So I got sent home so that everybody can kind of feel good and so that everybody can kind of breathe and not feel like they were scared for their lives or something. I don't know. You know, and everybody was cool with me except for that one person. And so maybe sending me home just kind of lessened the the stress or just made the energy better, you know? And so they were able to have a good time and enjoy the night. And I'm glad that they were able to because I don't want to be a strain or a stress or worry on anybody. Because number one, I know I'm not a serial killer. I know I'm not a crazy person. But I don't want you to feel like I am, you know. So we got sent home and um, they, they still had a good time. So I... I say this story to say, you have to put yourself on the platform. You have to scream from the mountaintops who the you are. Being in the background, trying to be quiet is no longer going to work. If you want to sit with the who's who's, if you want to sit at the table, if you want to be invited to the rooms, if you if you want to pay, if you want people to pay you what just what they owe you, you have to make your name great. You have to show up and show out. Whether that's the bombest outfit, whether that's the baddest hairstyle, whether that's the bombest makeup, whether that's opening your mouth and letting people know you're here, you have to learn to do that. Some people are like, no, I don't really want to shine my light too bright. I don't really want to seem like I'm stepping on toes. Step on toes. Because if you don't let people know that you mean business and that you, that you are worthy, they're going to treat you like that. You're not going to get the check they promised you because you ain't nobody to them. You're going to get sent home because don't nobody knows you. You know? And if you care about having a seat at the table, I have... I have applied for seats at the tables my whole life and did not get them because nobody knew me. Nobody knew my name. Maybe they or maybe they just people have their cliques. They have people they want around them. And even if you're the smartest, the cutest, if there's something that you don't do for them, if there's something, if you don't kiss their behinds, if you don't give them some type of recognition, if if you're not handing if you're not at their feet, head and feet, you know, if you're not one of those peasants, they treat you like crap. Y'all don't like Beyonce, I get it. But if Beyonce didn't show up the way Beyonce showed up, she would continue to be treated like she's an in Destiny's Child. You have to see yourself as someone who's worthy to be heard, seen, and respected. No more... I'm just, I don't want to, I just want to be in the background. No, I'm in the front ground. You're going to see me. You're going to know my name and you are going to respect me. And that check you owe me, I'm going to have it by the end of the week or else. You have to stand up for yourself in such a way that whatever you want out of this life, you get it because you believe in yourself. You know who you are. You know whose you are and ain't nobody going to play you. And if it happens... You just tell yourself, you know what? Yeah, you did it once, but I bet next time you're going to know my name, you're going to see my name, and you're going to feel my name. And, you know, you, you just, if you want, we live in a world, we live in America. You can't just think people are going to be nice and kind to you. They might, they will, but you have to beat that hammer so hard so hard that you make a dent. You let people know you were here. You let people know that you mattered. That's why I'm so big on doing something in this world so people know you were here. And I know you feel that. I know you want people to know that you were here. 
I know you want people to know that you existed. And you're just waiting on somebody to give you a handout. Ain't no more waiting. It's time to knock the door down. It's time to knock the door down. Let people know you existed. Let people know you were here. Not only will you get more money, not only will you get more respect, but you will have more dignity and you will have more of that feeling that you mattered. And you, and I'm telling you, people will use and they will abuse as long as you let them. Mm -mm. Ain't no more letting nobody do nothing. Unless you're the person doing it. And I had to learn that. Like, yeah, I got kicked out. I got put back on the plane. You want to know why I go so hard? Why I show up every day? Not only because I want to make my mark in the world, but I know, I know what consistency does. I know what showing up does. I know what believing in myself does. I ain't got time for shy. I ain't got time for I'm scared. I ain't got time for let's just let her do it. No, I'm showing up. I'm doing it. You will know who did it. I did it. And I'm not going to be quiet because you don't know who I am. You're going to know. You're going to find out who I am. I'm going to make a mark in this world. I'm going to be somebody and I'm going to be the person I've always wanted to be. And you're going to give me my check. You're going to respect me. See, I'm telling you, some of y'all, you want this life, but you, you're so scared. You're so scared. You don't really want to, you don't really want to step on nobody's toes. You, you want to make sure you're a, a nice person. Mm -mm. Some people don't respect nice people like that. Some people don't give you what you deserve just because you're nice. You step up and you let people know who you are. And that's how you get your respect. And you can do that with your creativity, with your talent. With, with your money, with your finances. Y'all wonder why I go so hard? I got stuff to do. I got things to pay. The reason why things won't go downhill for me is because I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I don't want to ask anybody anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to seat at your table because I'm good enough. I know I'm good enough. You know, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, but you got to stop sitting in the background waiting to be picked. A lot of y'all spend your whole lives waiting on God. When God said, I already gave it to you. What are you waiting for? You're going to be sitting there waiting until you it's time for you to go. And then you're going to be bitter and regretful because God never showed up. God always showed up. You just had to stop being fearful and scared and blaming everybody and, and blaming your circumstances. You're going to have to stand up and push your way through the crowd and knock the door down if you want what you want. So people know you here and you come in and then, and then they're not going to keep you down. God has always been there ready for you. Ready. All this waiting you're doing is just fear. And I'm the one. I'm the one. Because fear has kept me down for too long. And I've been knocked down. And I get back up. Every time.